Hello everyone, today I'm going to be bringing you a video of Dominions 5. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Doublebite. Well, at least he calls me his friend in his videos. <laughs> but yeah, he's a pretty cool dude with a much better YouTube channel than mine. He has a more diverse set of uploads than just Dominions. I will be linking his channel in the description below. This is a 1v1 game and Doublebite will be my opponent. I will be playing Rus and he will be playing Ermor. So let's jump right into the Pretender creation. I've already submitted my Pretender, but um, I'll go ahead and show you my pretend, what I'm deciding to do for my Pretender as well as my army composition. So we're playing Rus. Um, so as far as armory composition, since we're on this screen, um, one of the main things we're gonna be going for is the Chud Skin Shifters. They're sacred, they recuperate, they're awesome. They turn into bears when you kill them the first time. So they're just awesome. They're gonna be my mainstay unit. I also really like bear warriors because they've got the double axes and um, I, I, I and they're gonna kind of be my mainstay in the forest provinces where I can recruit them. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, as far as magic goes, I'm going to be building a lot of Russian wizards ultimately because I want to try all the different national summons that Rus has. So I'm going to be trying to go for that. Um, but I'm going to try and get a little bit of everything and just experiment. This is more of a fun game and even if I lose... It's no big deal. <laughs> I'm here to have fun. I'm having fun playing this game, lose or win. Uh, but yeah, we'll jump right into Pretender creation. So as far as the Pretender I'm going with, I'm going with a Fountain of Blood. So Rus is not a Blood Nation. So this was the Magic Paths I chose. I chose 4 Astral and 9 Blood. So the Fountain, I really like the Fountains. They are immobile Pretenders, so they cannot move. But um, if you go, if you have astral paths, you can learn a spell called teleport and teleport will allow you to move between provinces, even if you are immobile. So I will be using that for sure, um, with this God. Um, other than that, he will mainly be at home base researching, but he'll also be blood hunting and summoning demons with blood magic. Um, now Rus is not a blood nation, so this probably won't work too well, but I'm doing it anyways. So, I like the fountain, and I want to do blood stuff. So that's my magic paths. As far as my scales go, I'm doing 8 dominion candles, and um, I'm doing uh, heavy turmoil, and luck. So I like these two in tandem because it drives up the uh, chance of random events very high, and most of those events are going to be good because of a positive luck scale. Um, I'm still at negative 35, so the other big thing I'm doing is I'm doing 3 cold instead of Roos' natural 2. So now I'm at 5 design points. So this is the Pretender God that I submitted to the game. I've already played out a few turns, and I already have some problems with it. Um, so the main one being blood, probably not a good idea, but... I like the blood bless effects. Oh, you know what? I didn't even talk about bless effects yet. So I'm going to go ahead and add my bless effects that I chose. So I chose two arcane command and magic weapons as my astral. And for my blood, I chose blood surge and blood bond. So my reasoning here was that I'm going to be summoning magical Russian monsters. So I want to have magic leadership to lead them. So that's why I went with this. And magic weapons, I just did it more just to see if it would matter <laughs> um it says that you know it don't it, it helps you hit ethereal and invulnerable troops but i don't think i'll be fighting any of those so this probably is not the best uh, i probably should have gone with magic resistance instead in hindsight but um can't take it back now obviously um blood surge is cool so it buffs your sacred units when they get a kill um you can read the description below uh, but really, I like Blood Bond. I feel like this synergizes really well with Skin Shifters because the Skin Shifters will go Berserk when they're injured. And what the Blood Bond will do is it'll transfer damage um, evenly across all of the blessed units. And it'll cause them all to go into a rage at once, ideally. Um, so yeah, I really like the Blood Bond ability. But one thing, one crazy synergy 
with Blood Bond that I wish I had explored instead of doing what I did now, just do like nature blood, I could go into nature and get regeneration. So with regeneration, all of those skin shifters who are blessed and sharing damage evenly amongst themselves would be regenerating that damage back. I feel like there'd be a huge boon and would massively increase the survivability of my troops, but it's not what I decided to do. So, too bad for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's the pretend. This is the pretender that I submitted to the game. So that's what we will be playing. But yeah, ultimately my strategy: summon demons, summon magical beasts, and use skin shifters, and have fun. That's really my my tenets. So. I'll just cancel out of this. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the upcoming turns. Hi everyone, here we are with turn one of Rus. So you can see I've already played the turn out. Um, the turns I will be recording will be a combination of hindsight turns and live turns, just as I get time to record. Um, so this is turn one, I've already played this out. So we'll be lo we'll look back at what I decided to do during our first turn of a game. So we've got our Pretender God. He's an Awake Pretender, so here he is right now. Um, he's got 31 research points. We've already looked over his my build for him in the last video. I'm having him set to research immediately. And um, I intend to use a my Prophet to bless Sacreds. So generally my strategy with who to Prophetize is I profit, if I don't want to use Sacreds, I Prophetize a Scout. If I want to use Sacreds, I Prophetize a General. So this Russian Chieftain is going to be Prophetized and this Scout will be running off. He'll be sneaking to, uh, you know, do stuff. Recruitment wise, I'm just getting as many Skin Shifters as possible and a Wizard just to get my research up and to get my skin shifters out. Um, as far as where I'm prioritizing research, I'm going to prioritize construction too because um, I want quills. I want the quills as soon as possible. So that's ultimately my, my logic there. But that's really it for turn one. I'll see you guys in turn two. Hi everyone, here we are with turn two of Rus. So, um... I got Construction 1 immediately, prioritizing Construction 2. Um, so we've both declared Prophets this turn. So Ermor um, prophetized Hannibal the Scout, Prophet of ha Hephaestus. <laughs> so with this name, um, it's kind of like Hephaestus, which I think is like the Smith God in Greek mythology. So I'm thinking he might have chosen like the Smith dude. Um, as his pretender choice, but that might just be like, this could literally be anything. It could be like Lord of the Dead or something. I don't know. This is just like me, me making conjectures. So my, uh, my Russian chieftain is my prophet and Sippy. I mean, he might know, hey, he's playing a fountain with this name. I don't care. I like, I like come up with names at the last minute and it's like, he's a fountain. I'm going to sip, Sippy. So... I got an unexpected event, I got an air gem, I love it. So, Sippy continues to research, we're gonna keep climbing up that research ladder. Um, recruitment wise, I'm getting as many skin shifters as possible while also getting another wizard. I'm trying to get an air one wizard, um, so that I can forge those quills. Uh, I'm also moving out my newly prophetized commander this turn. Um, so what he's going to be doing is he's moving up here. We kind of, I kind of already made a decision looking at these. I just want to take the lightest, the lightest, uh, at, um, the lightest defended, defended pro um, province. That's kind of my logic there. So I'm like this one, 30 units, militias, arbiters, and heavy infantry. I think my dudes can handle it. So we press Y to see who's moving there this turn. So my formation, I just have my general in the back and he's just gonna do divine blessing to bless all my skin shifters. I have four skin shifters and I think these are Russian warriors, yep. My Russian warriors are gonna be up in the front attacking immediately. Um, meanwhile, my Russian hunters, they're just gonna be in the back shooting arrows. So pretty simple formation. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Still just prioritizing construction too. Gonna have that in three turns with, at this rate. I think um, maybe two turns. 
because I'm going to get the third, um, the second wizard out. But yeah. Um, so that's it. I think I went over everything. Um, one thing I didn't even realize until later: Double Bite like immediately recruited a mercenary, and I'm like, oh gosh, I didn't realize this until uh, later that he's been like recruiting mercenaries. I didn't even cross my mind that I should be doing that because I'm sitting here like skin shifters, wizard, and then I have like no gold left. So. It's definitely smart to get mercenaries because they help you expand. Uh, especially since I have this stupid freaking lake and I can't do anything about it. See, he, he took the mercenaries just to get to clear out this lake. I guarantee it. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, I guess I'll be seeing you guys in turn three. Hi everyone, here we are with turn three of Vanarus. Or sorry, of Rus. <laughs> So we've been one event, the uh, battle, so we moved our prophet and his little starting group to um, a province last turn, so now we're attacking. Um, you can see I've got my archers in the back, warriors in the front, we've got a couple little archers back there, and some little infantry guys over there. All my skin shifters are blessed, and yeah, those the archers are actually doing some work, they, they throw them apart. All my all my skin shifters immediately get enraged because of the blood bond, except for one. One's not enraged. He's not angry enough yet, I guess. So I think I lose like one Russian warrior here. Um, one thing I didn't even think to point out: the claim life spell. So I think this is because um, I'm a I I'm blood heavy. I have this claim life spell, and I remember reading about it. It basically just like tries to like tear the heart out of its out of the opponent they're like left with like a chest wound if they like survive it so they're like they're not doing too hot if they even if they survive but ideally they just die you know i love like the new kind of smite spells the new kind of priest spells that are kind of based off of different paths but yeah i i get a route pretty easily here archers run off but yeah we don't need to keep watching let's just look at the casualty list so I lost one Russian warrior. Um, that's fine. Uh, so that was that. Um, I'm moving here next turn because once again, pretty small group. Uh, one thing I'm trying to prioritize is I want to get my cap circle um, under control. So what that is, is it's the provinces immediately surrounding your capital. So I want to get these five under control. These two are very problematic because this one's a very heavily um, defended throne and this one's a water so I'm gonna have a lot of trouble getting either of these under control um, my opponent is you know slightly more fortunate in that he has not he does not have a throne in his camp circle because thrones are very heavily defended even like level one thrones are much more heavily defended than yes your average provinces are really so it's kind of unfortunate um, also, so as far as uh, recruitment goes, I've got my second wizard and we're, we're researching. We're um, continuing to do research. I think I decided to do four, construction four, because I want the dowsing rods. And the dowsing rods are a uh, construction four item. But yeah, that's that. I, I, I tend to just heavily research construction because I love items. I just love forging items. It's just all I like to do. But um, recruitment wise, I'm not getting a wizard this turn. Um, I want to get, I'm just getting another scout out, and I'm also getting more skin shifters. So, unfortunately, it seems like I forgot to move this scout last turn. I should be moving him as close as I can to my opponent to see how he's doing, doing anything, you know, how his provinces are doing, you know. So it's kind of unfortunate I didn't manage to move this scout last turn. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's all I've got, um. Moving here with my Prophet's army. I've got a couple of skin shifters here just kind of hanging out. Eventually I'll get another commander or I'll just have this guy come and pick him up. But yeah, that's really it for turn three. I'll see you guys in turn four. Hi everyone, uh, here we are with turn four of Rus. So, got construction level two. Um, we had another battle. So this is once again our Prophet, his little group. Um, up against basically the same kind of ordeal. More infantry, macked up with some archers. Um, but yeah, we'll speed it up. You can see. So one of my dudes, I forgot to point this out last turn. This dude got diseased, which means he never heals. So he actually entered this battle with, like, no health. 
and then immediately turned into a bear. <laughs> I just, I love that. I love that these guys just, oh, instead of dying, I just turn into a bear. And you can see they're all immediately berserked because of a blood bond. Um, these guys managed to sneak past. These poor little hunters. It's a good thing they got spears. Because, yep, one of them pretty much dies immediately. And the bear's coming back to protect the rear. I love that thoughtful little bear logic. Oh, gotta protect the archers. So, um, yeah. We pretty easily took out these... This rabble. Um, all of the infantry are dead. And we're just left with the archers. Basically, same story as last turn. Um... There we go. Boom. So, we also had an unexpected event. This is a bad one. 810 people left. People here are very displeased, and a substantial part of the population has left their homes in search of a better place to live. That's too bad. Um, but yeah, as far as movement goes, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know, YOLO, take out these wolf tribes. I'm, I, have, I have utmost faith in my skin shifters at this point. So, notice the diseased one, right? He went into his battle with, like, two health, and he came out, turned into a bear, healed all that back, and then turned back into a normal dude, and he's back to 15. So, yes, amazing. Um, weakened, that's kind of disappointing, but he's got recuperation, so he'll, he'll heal his afflictions. Um, I did not realize these guys are grandpas but they're chuds so their max age is 100 <laughs> two thumbs up to that so i really hope i can take out these wolf tribes we'll see this might have been a mistake but it's the last turn i did um that won't be live so we're gonna when you when we watch that battle you're gonna get to see my live reaction you're gonna get to see my live fail so um last turn i recruited a scout i'm sending him off to sneak uh, I remember that this scout exists. I'm sending him off to sneak as well. Um, recruitment wise, skin shifters. I'm also getting a couple of Russian warriors, I guess, just kind of as chaff. Also getting another wizard. Um, so, yeah. That's really it for this turn. Um, yeah, if you look at the mercenaries, this is, this is a turn where I realized, oh my gosh, my opponent has been getting mercenaries. I totally forgot about these. And look at that, he's hired both out. So he might have, like, I have one expansion force, and I've, t I've been expanding every turn but the first, right? But he's been using mercenaries, so he may well be getting, like, two or three provinces a turn. I have no idea. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. Um, oh yeah, as far as research goes, still just crawling up to four. It's going to take a long time to get to four, but we'll get there eventually. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in turn five.